the call of Abraham. Wickedness had again darkened the mind of humanity. The one true God was all but forgotten. The greater number of people were given to the worship of idols. In great mercy, God again planned a way to keep the knowledge of himself alive. He knew of a good man, a virtuous man, Abram, living in the city of Ur. God's voice came to Abram, leave your country, God said, and your father's house and go into the land of Canaan. Abram had faith in the voice that spoke to him. Even though he was not happy about leaving the city he loved, he obeyed God promptly. Abram, his wife Sarai, his aged father, his nephew Lot and his wife, and many servants made ready to leave. They took with them herds of cattle, their camels, and all their possessions. God was pleased with Abram's obedience and shortly after made him this promise. I will give you and your posterity the land of Canaan. You shall be the father of a great people and through you all nations shall be blessed. Canaan from that time on was known as the promised land. God blessed Abram. He lived in peace, was esteemed by his neighbours, and his flocks increased beyond all expectation. But there was a great suffering in his heart. Many years had passed. He and Sarai were aging, and yet they had no child of their own. The Lord understood Abram's sorrow, and one night God called Abram from his tent and said, Look at the heavens, count the stars if you can. Your children and your children's children will be as numerous as the stars. Abram believed the Lord and was once more filled with hope. He now waited for a child. Again, the Lord spoke, your name shall be Abraham, not Abram, because you shall be the father of many nations. And Sarai shall be called Sarah, the mother of princes. I will fulfill my promise to you and give you a son. He shall be the father of nations and the father of kings. You shall call him Isaac. Isaac.